hacking the health system. I love it. Why? Because last time I went to the doctor, I spent an hour and a half in her waiting room and then no more than five minutes in her office fighting with her about my health. I was sent home with three prescriptions, none of which I actually took. So I went to the doctor a couple of months ago, albeit a little bit apprehensively, in search of some allergy support. I was reacting to weird foods and thought that maybe my doctor could give me some answers. But I wasted a lot of time and I had absolutely no allergy support. We have the power to put our health into our own hands by asking the right questions, surrounding ourselves with powerful resources like Healthful Pursuit and others, and getting to know our bodies. Where does it all start? Right here. Joining us today is Reed Jenner for our awesome Q&A. Reed is acclaimed naturopathic problem-solving specialist with over 20 years experience designing, teaching, and facilitating root cause analysis techniques in the health sector, solving hundreds of health problems for clients with a wide range of maladies. He is passionately focused on helping his patients use their personal health history to find the quickest, simplest, and least invasive permanent solution to their health concerns. In his experience, the vast majority of these concerns can be solved in 60 to 120 minutes. 60 to 120 minutes? Wow, you've got me there, Reed. That's phenomenal. Enough to make anyone want to listen. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you, Leanne, for having me. My pleasure to be here. Awesome. So I've got a bunch of questions uh, prepped for you. Are you ready to dive in? Of course. Awesome. I'm all for empowering our community to discover their health through self-experimentation based on your approach to wellness for a person that's suffering with illness what can they do for themselves that their doctor can't? Well, uh, a few things. Um, the first thing is that uh, largely by virtue of the way our health uh, system is set up, uh, doctors uh, aren't prepared to necessarily, as you mentioned in your introduction, give a great deal of time uh, to perform the examination, especially an initial examination. I mean, they're paid essentially by the minute and uh, if they spend too much time the amount they receive from uh, the one payer system starts to diminish and not to suggest that doctors are entirely mercenary but largely because of this they're motivated to try to and because they have large waiting lists typically waiting in the waiting room uh, they you know kind of churn people through their office pretty quickly and so you're lucky to get 10 minutes most people studies have shown uh, the average examination is 10 minutes or less. So the first thing that an individual can bring that a doctor can't is time. And you mentioned 60 to 120 minutes. We'll need to come back to that because I don't want to scare people away that they <laughs> need necessarily to spend that much time. But oftentimes it takes more than 10 minutes to really get to the bottom of uh, a, a serious illness. And, and you're lucky to get that much time with the doctor. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, most of the research shows that uh, most illnesses, maladies, are, are not caused by genetic or internal uh, factors. They're caused by external factors, such as um, diet or, or lifestyle or um, exposure to some sort of irritant or toxin or stress or something like that. And uh, so it really boils down to things that the individual is doing or has been exposed to that usually can be traced as the root cause of many, if not most, illnesses. And, you know, this is information that the doctor is not going to have. It's certainly not generally solicited in the uh, patient history form that you fill in. And because the doctor is in kind of a rush when you get in there to perform the examination, and as you may know, most doctors don't ask a lot of probing questions. No. They're more interested in kind of examining you with their various, you know, tools and tests and instruments. So the other thing that the patient can bring is, is very good information about their um, own illness and the, the history of their uh, illness and the associated uh, activities that they've been uh, undertaking that, that may be contributing to their illness. Okay, so I know from my experience, like I said, like I was waiting in that waiting room for at least two hours and then she spent, I, I was chatting with my naturopathic doctor and she was saying because she's also a medical doctor that they, 
that the quota is seven minutes, I guess, in Alberta, at mm -hmm. least, mm -hmm. um, where they have just seven minutes with a patient. And I was with that doctor about my allergies for seven minutes. And she said, here are three prescriptions. Take them for your life, your entire life, <laughs> because you're allergic to grass and try to avoid the outdoors. And I was oh like, oh, my God. Have you, what? You I, captured in a I, nutshell the I, essence I, of it. <laughs> And I've been a camp counselor. I go camping. Like, I'm not allergic to grass. There's something deeper here. But she just didn't, you know, there was no time to go through that. So I think, you know, your your point on us having the time that the doctors don't, that's so clear that, yeah, maybe it's not 60 to 120 minutes because that is um, a long time. But that even anything more than seven minutes has got to be better. Yeah, and it's funny, so many people I've talked to, virtually everybody I talk to, they have a story just like yours, or, you know, somebody close to them has a story just like yours, and it's infuriating, you know, and again, not to completely impugn doctors, I mean, most of the time, you know, they, they're able to actually pull it off in those seven yeah. minutes, but at least 20%, autopsies actually show that um, more than 20% of uh, serious illnesses that actually lead to death were misdiagnosed, uh, which is pretty scary if you think about it. Uh, so whether it's a serious illness or a not so serious illness, you know, doctors are, are not infallible, and often it takes more than seven to ten minutes to properly diagnose, uh, you know, a malady that you may have. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, you know, that you mentioned that um, there's a lot of misdiagnosis out there. So what unique information does a patient have that the doctor doesn't? Yeah. So again, when you when you dive into the process that I, I outline in my in my book, uh, and with so many applications uh, of this process with various types of maladies, as you mentioned in the intro, uh, there's it, it boils down to something an individual is doing or something an individual has been exposed to in the environment. Usually, ninety whatever percent of the time, it's something like that. And so there's very specific information that an individual can and should uh, collect or, or at least, um, you know, track. And this is outlined uh, in my book, and I've got some worksheets that we can talk about later that make it a little bit easier to track this. Uh, so, for instance, I'll just give you a couple of examples maybe that kind of illustrate this. Um, so uh, there's a patient that I outline in my book uh, who had a problem with um, red eye. And it wasn't normal red eye, it was the sclera, the white of her eye, completely turned red. Wow. Uh, but only when she traveled to visit her parents in China. And it was very weird because she would fly very often, but only when she flew to see her parents in China. And uh, so, again, we went through the process, and it took more than 10 minutes, but, you know, roughly an hour or so, we did an analysis, and we asked what was different about that particular flight compared to all the other flights or travel that she had done and what she travels very often in other places with her business. And it was discovered that this particular airport had a very high elevation. Uh, the city in China was inland and it was a very high elevation. It was ringed with mountains. And so long story short, we hypothesized that it was the rapid change in air pressure due to the rapid descent of the airplane into this particular airport that was causing a, a change in air pressure in the cabin because the airplane can only adjust so quickly. Uh, and if she was one of those people that whatever had somewhat compromised whatever circulation, uh, all it takes is one little blood vessel capillary in her eye to basically expand and burst to cause this problem. And so we came up with this hypothesis, and then we tested it very simply by having her use over-the-counter Visine medication the next time she traveled she applied this um, over-the-counter medication to her eye just before the plane started to land. This medication, of course, um, um, reduces the size of the capillaries. It's basically meant to treat red eye. And so it reduced the size of the capillaries so that when they did expand, she did not get a rupture. And it worked. Uh, wow, now that's so awesome. I couldn't even imagine what a medical doctor, I mean, at least the ones that I've met, um, would have said to her, like, here, take well, exactly. a lifelong pr no prescription way. for... There's... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, just just take a lifelong prescription for whatever and, and have fun with all your travels. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's no way the doctor would have, would have ascertained or, or 
gathered all the relevant information to, to reach this conclusion, certainly in 10 minutes. And, and this is one of the few instances where some sort of medication was indicated, at least to test and prove the uh, cause. Uh, the long-term solution is probably doing something to improve her circulation. You know, the eyes are kind of a, the canary in the coal mine, as it, as it were, or the, or the coal mine, um, as an indicator of your general uh, cardiovascular fitness. But at least she was able to stop it from happening, and she knew what was causing it, and maybe some things that she needed to do to improve her overall uh, health. So, and I've got there's so many stories, I won't bore you with them. We only have so much time, but it always boils down to something to do with the location where the individual is um, operating, or um, the the timing in which uh, when the, the problem uh, manifests itself. Or something unique about their habits uh, that they're they're doing, uh, and so there's very specific information uh, about location and timing and magnitude and what's different about me versus other people similar to me who are not experiencing the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go through that process, it almost always points to something unique about one of those factors that leads us to the cause. I was meeting with a client a couple of months ago and she said, I have this crazy rash on my face and I thought it was um, facial creams or maybe allergies, but I can't piece it together. So again, we sat down for over an hour. We went through all the different patterns and what she was eating and uh, we looked at everything and situations and stress levels. It turns out that um, she was saying, well, I do react to sunflower seeds. And then a couple um, minutes later, she said, oh, yeah, I do react to eggs. And then we said, okay, well, what's the similarity between eggs and sunflower? Well, they both have lecithin. Okay, was the greens powder, did it have lecithin in it too? Mm -hmm. Oh, it did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was on she was on medications to try to remove this rash she was not washing her face with specific things because she thought it was causing it and it mm -hmm. wasn't even a facial issue it was that she was allergic to lecithin um and great example yep, yeah another it's... perfect example and this is the sort of thing that most people aren't going to automatically find this and certainly doctors aren't going to find this in a quick short examination so the, the individual the patient can collect very specific information in a specific way to filter out the irrelevant information and really focus and pinpoint on things like that that will hopefully lead them to the true cause where they can find a pretty simple solution to the problem it's so empowering and I know that so many listeners today will benefit from just knowing that you don't always have to, I mean, there are health issues where for sure you need medical assistance mm -hmm. and there's things that happen, but for those r random things that you can't figure out, generally it's just a matter of sit down, write it all out and, and um, well, problem can solve. Can you share with us the most common sources or root causes of illness that you found benefit from this type of medical hack? Uh, sure. Uh, so just a couple other real quick examples. Um, the lead-in story in my book is about an individual who saw, and his her daughter, both of them actually, suffered from very, very serious sinus infections for many, many years. He himself for almost 20 years. And he had been to see specialist after specialist, and they had prescribed all kinds of heavy-duty medication and, you know, scraping out his sinuses, very painful kind of interventions. And they, the doctors really had no clue. And, and again, we, we went through the process, and just real quick, it boiled down to that he had moved into a new home uh, in the uh, northeast where he was using a wood stove to heat his house. And this particular wood stove was located in the basement where he operated his study and his younger daughter had her basement. So the two of them were uniquely exposed to a lot of wood ash that was being produced by this wood stove, whereas his wife and other daughter spent very little time in the basement, had no problem with sinus infections. And so uh, there's another example uh, of a, a, a toxin, if you want to use that word, an irritant in the environment. Once you find it, it's incredibly easy and was easy to fix that particular problem. Um, I had another client um, who had a problem with tingling fingers. And 
the doctors uh, thought he had, he was in a, a rear end car accident not too long you know, before this. And so the doctors quickly surmised that it was an issue with his spine and they were doing all kinds of scary stuff or wanted to do all kinds of scary stuff, including operations with his spine, et cetera. We went through the process and found that, uh, again, quick going right to the, <laughs> the solution here, that he saw the, the car coming in his rear view mirror, mirror and so he braced himself very uh, much against the steering wheel and actually pushed himself against the steering wheel at the moment of impact and when we noticed where on his hands we actually had him hold a wheel we could see that the points of impact on his hand matched precisely the nerves that went to those two outside fingers where he had the tingling fingers and so we had him go back to his doctors and they did a very simple cortisone test to prove that it was these damaged nerves in his hands not his neck that was causing the problem uh, you know the fix is maybe a little more complicated but the good news is he doesn't need to have neck surgery obviously to address this issue so i have many many other examples and only so much time here but it always boils down to it's not something internal 99 percent of the time is nothing genetic it's that you've done or something you're doing or something you've been exposed to and once you find it it's usually pretty simple to fix it or stop the symptoms that's so cool i know that with my own practice and working in nutrition for over eight years it's it's always just that little thing that nobody thinks of but having somebody else or or a resource that kind of walks you through that it's amazing what you can find so quickly when you just take a look from a different perspective um, it's really cool so what advantages does the patient or or our readers have in taking the time to diagnose his or her own illness prior to during or after a doctor visit Yes. <clears throat> well, the main advantage is that they have the time to gather all the relevant facts um, and that there's a template that we basically have provided um, and you can download the free worksheets, et cetera, from my website. It's a full template that shows you this very specific questions that you should and can ask and you know, in a convenient way to organize the information so that you have all the relevant facts about the history of your illness and you can analyze it yourself at zero cost and zero um, you know consequence uh, and you can do this before you go to the doctor or you can do it you know in the process you know when your doctor is trying to figure it out maybe you're going for multiple visits you can do this you know between visits or even after a visit where if you're not convinced that as you mentioned some examples the doctors really figured it out and you want to kind of just test the hypothesis so it's really just taking the time gather the facts write them down maybe keep a log of, of how your symptoms are expressing over time and this is something that you have the time the information and the motivation to do that perhaps your doctor does not mm. So I'll include the link you mentioned that um, there was a problem description worksheet. So I'll include that link on the blog post and below the video if listeners want to take a look and download the worksheets. Um, so knowing all of this, what three actions can listeners do right now to take their health into their own hands? Okay, that's a good, great question, Leanne. So three things. First off, keep a log. Uh, one of the obvious things is... You know, we're not always paying attention to what we're doing and, and, you know, what we're eating and some of the other things that may be playing a role in, in causing or contributing to our illness. And it's pretty simple, just informally, back of a napkin even. Uh, just keep track of, you know, how your symptoms may be modulating over time and what you're doing differently uh, when they're worse. And oftentimes it's as simple as that. So that's the first simple thing that most people can do. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a formal Excel spreadsheet. You can just literally take some notes, as I say, on a napkin. Um, the second thing is, if you want to be a little more rigorous, you can actually sit down and take a few minutes to record all the relevant facts uh, as per, you know, the process that I've outlined and, and the worksheets that I can provide. Um, and the third thing is, before you go to see your doctor, gather this information and, um, you know, prepare your your findings for want of a better word so that you can go to the doctor and say wait wait before you start examining me let me give you some relevant information here's when it happened here's where i was when it happened 
here's exactly where in my body I'm experiencing it. It's only happening to me, not my wife or my younger daughter or, you know, all these people I work with who are exposed to very similar things. And as a result, here's something that I think is unique to me that, that is very likely contributing to this problem. What do you think? So, you know, go in prepared before you see your healthcare professional and provide this information to help your healthcare professional uh, diagnose your um, problem decisively and correctly the first time out of the gate. Totally, instead of having to go back over and over and over. Or exactly. the thing I do is I always write a note to myself before I go, even to my naturopath, I have a, a stack of notes and then I just compile them and that way it's like, a couple lines and I say this is what's happening this is when it happened and and so you're prepared so you're not wasting anyone's time and you can really delve deep into the issue instead of wasting other people's time and and um, having to pay more to see them over and over and over again so um, knowing these three actions um, I'd love to ask the listeners what imbalances issues or worries do you have with your health that you feel that you would likely benefit from a little self-discovery using the tools that Reed's shared with us today. So definitely, I'd love to chat with you about this in the comments, either below the video or in the blog post, and we can chat about those different imbalances um, and issues that you have going on right now. For those interested in learning more about healing yourself quickly and effectively without drugs or surgery, pick up a copy of Reed's book, Diagnose Yourself, from Amazon. I'll include a link uh, to his book below the video and also in my on my blog and um, diagnose yourself uh, read highlights everything that he was chatting about with us today it gives us a much deeper level and thoroughly reviewing your circumstances that lead to powerful healing without the use of drugs which in my opinion only mask a lot of the problems that are going on so I'll definitely include a link to Reed's book in in uh, the material for today's recording and something that I'm very interested in myself. Thanks again, Reed. Uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Really good oh, chat. It was really a pleasure talking with you, Leanne, and I hope uh, your listeners and followers can get some value from uh, following this process. And if they have any successes or quick wins, I I'd love to hear. I'm always uh, so thrilled to hear when people can solve some, especially long-standing or chronic health issues. Uh, just by taking a little bit of time to go through this process. So thanks for having me. Yeah, it's such a simple practice, but it's pretty powerful. So thanks for sharing your strategies. My pleasure.